Hello everybody, I'm back with another video in the How to Go Soul Winning series. So today I want to get into the actual presentation of the gospel. When you go up to somebody and they say they want to hear it, you know, they're not saved, they want to hear the gospel, I'm going to go through each of the different steps of how to present the gospel. So first of all, the first point you want to establish with the person that you're preaching to is the fact that we are all sinners, right? So this point should not take very long because most people already understand and believe this, but it's still important to address this point uh, so that you make sure um, that these people know why they need to be saved in the first place, right? Now, the thing is, don't be deceived by like what's popular today, this kind of street preacher mentality uh, that who kind of spend too much time on talking about people's individual sins. And the reason why these street preachers do this is because oftentimes they're heretics who believe you have to repent of your sins. So they say, oh, well, here's all your sins that you've done. So now you need to repent of all them, right? Which doesn't really make any sense, but you know, that's a subject for another video. Anyway, the point is you want to just quickly go through this and establish that we're all sinners. Sometimes they don't understand that. Sometimes they don't believe that. Um, but you just want to quickly show them what the Bible says about it, right? The best verses to start at are Romans 3.10 and Romans 3.23. So as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23, right? Now, if more explanation is needed, if you show them this and they don't understand what you're saying, they don't understand what sin is, then these verses are good to use as well. First John 1 John 1.8. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, right? So that's usually the one that I go to next after showing them Romans 3.23 and Romans 3.23 and ask them, are you a sinner? And they say, no, I'm not. And I say, well, 1 John 1, 8 says you're a liar because the Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, right? Mark 10.18 is another good verse. That's where Jesus uh, says there is none good but one, that is God. So they say, oh, well, I'm a good person. I haven't done anything wrong. And you say, well, actually, according to Jesus, nobody's good. There's not a good person at all except for God, because God is the only uh, one without sin. We're all sinners, right? Ecclesiastes 7.20, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not, right? Now, it's also, I think, important to define sin as a transgression of the law. So uh, that's what the Bible says in 1 John 3, 4. Sin is the transgression of the law, right? And to give at least one example, and the best example, I think, uh, to give would be lying. So asking them, have you ever told a lie? The reason why that's the best example is because it's something that everybody has done, but it will also help you later when you go to Revelation 21, 8 and show them all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, right? To establish to somebody that because of the fact that they've told a sin like lying, they deserve hell for their sins. And therefore they can't get to heaven by being good because they're already on their way to hell because they've already messed up, right? So that's why it's good to give that example of, have you ever told a lie, right? Now, sometimes young people or people who just uh, really didn't grow up in church or go to church that much, they have heard the word sin, but they don't really know what it means. So like I said, you shouldn't spend all day on this point. You should only spend like less than a minute talking about this. But at the same time, you don't want to just ask them, are you a sinner? Yes, I'm a sinner. Okay. And then just move on, right? Because sometimes they'll say yes to that because that's what they've heard their whole life. But a lot of people surprisingly don't know what it means. The way I know this, and I learned this from a brother I went soul winning with, I, I've gone soul winning with a lot because I, I observed him doing this, is that he would ask people, what makes you a sinner or what is sin? And they wouldn't be able to answer it, right? So it's amazing. You can go up to somebody and say, hey, are you a sinner? Yes, I'm a sinner. Do you know what sin is? Do you know what a sinner is? No, I don't. It's like, well, then why why would you say you believe you're a sinner if you don't even know what that means, right? So that's why this is the way I do it personally, Judge. Just as an example, usually I'll start off, I'll say, so first of all, so-and-so, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says sin is the transgression of the law. So when you break God's commandments, that is a sin. For example, God doesn't want you to lie. Have you ever told a lie before? They say, yes, I've told a lie. And so I say, so because you've done things against God's law, like lying, what does that make you? That makes me a sinner. Okay, perfect. And then you move on, right? So you don't want to just ask them, hey, are you a sinner? Yes. Okay, let's move on. You again want to show them the verse, Romans 3.23, explain what sin is, give that example. That's, I think, the most effective way to do it. Now, after 
you establish the fact that they're a sinner. You also want to explain to them the consequence for their sin, which would be the, the punishment of hell, right? So move on to talking about hell. Firstly, Romans 3.23 is a good place to go where it says for the wages of sin is death because that shows them that the payment for their sin, what they earn, what they deserve is death. But then also go to the book of Revelation to explain that it's not just physical death, but also what the Bible calls the second death, which is the lake of fire, right? And so Romans 20 verses 14 to 15 and Revelation, I'm sorry, not Romans, Revelation and Revelation 21 verse 8 are good to use. Me personally, I don't really use Revelation 20 verses 14 to 15, but some people do. You could, it helps define what hell and the lake of fire is, right? But usually I just go straight from Romans 6.23 to Revelation 21.8. And the reason why it's very useful, as I mentioned a moment ago, is because it says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Now, if you already asked them a minute ago, have you ever told a lie before? And they said, yes, then this will, again, help to establish the point that they deserve to go to hell for their sins, right? Now, also explain what hell is, right? It's a place of fire and torment for eternity, right? Now, the reason why it's good to explain what hell is, is because it establishes fear in their heart and it helps them to realize their need to get saved, right? The urgency that if they don't get saved and they die without Christ, then they will go to hell. The Bible says in Jude 1 verse 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh, right? So we should save some people with compassion, as it says in the verse before that, but it says others save with fear, right? So some people get saved by fear, right? They fear hell and then they believe in Jesus Christ, right? And so there's nothing wrong with making people scared of hell because hell is scary, right? If you die without Christ, you're going to burn for eternity. I mean, that's a scary thought, right? So that's why we should share to them what the punishment for their sin is and what will happen if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, right? Now, some may follow along with the point on hell. You know, you'll show them Revelation 21, 8, you'll say, Hey, the Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So according to the Bible, where do you deserve to go for your sins? They'll say, you deserve to go to hell, right? You'll show that to them. But then in their heart, they don't actually believe that hell exists. And that kind of seems strange. But again, from experience, I've seen this happen many times where I preach to them. I say, hey, there's a punishment for our sins. That's physical death, but also spiritual death, which is going to hell. I'll tell them. According to the Bible, hell is everlasting fire. Jesus says it's in the heart of the earth. Once somebody's there, they can never get out. And the Bible says, who it is that deserves to go to hell in Revelation 21, verse 8. I'll show it to them. Again, as I mentioned in a previous video, you know, it's good to show them the verse. I'll show it to them. Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. You might not have done all the sins on this list, but it does say all liars. And again, we've all told lies before. So according to the Bible, where do you deserve to go for your sins? And they say, hell. And then you ask them, do you believe that hell exists? No, or I'm not sure, or I don't know, right? So that's why I think it's a good question to ask them if they believe that hell exists, right? Because again, if they don't believe that hell exists, then they're not going to realize the need for why they'd be saved, right? If they just think everybody goes to heaven and that God doesn't send anybody to hell, then they're not going to trust Jesus to be their savior, right? So if they don't believe that hell exists, which some people do, some people don't, the following scriptures will help show them hell is a literal place of fiery torment. So Mark 9, verse 43 to 48, that's where Jesus talks about it. And he says, it's um, the fire which never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And then Luke chapter 16, I found works pretty easily. Uh, it's the story that Jesus tells of the, the beggar Lazarus and the rich man who dies. And it says that Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom, right? He goes to heaven. And then the rich man dies. And it says, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and dip your finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So I show them just these few verses. For, I think it's verse 22 to 24. And I show them and I say, look, in this verse... It says that this man, as soon as he dies, he's in hell, he's in torments, and this torment is in flame, right? So I, then I show that to them and I say, now do you believe that hell is a real place of torment and fire? And, you know, if they're just refusing to believe the Bible, sometimes they'll say no. But oftentimes, if they're genuine, they actually believe the Bible and they're just ignorant, they'll say yes. 
If you need some more scriptures, Revelation 14 verses 10 to 11 establishes that it's eternal, right? That's where it talks about the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Matthew 25, 41 and 46, where Jesus uh, says, depart ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil's angels. And then in verse 46, he says, uh, you know, the, the, the righteous shall go into eternal life, but these, uh, the goats shall go into eternal punishment. I'm paraphrasing, but he calls it everlasting fire and eternal punishment, the same chapter. So those are, again, good uh, verses to establish the fact that it's forever, right? So in, if they don't believe that hell is a real place, that hell is forever, these are good scriptures to show them, right? So point of this video, start in Romans 3, Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23, great places to start, establish they're a sinner, define what sin is, give them that example of the fact that they've told a lie, then explain what the consequence for their sin is, death. Romans 6, 23, second death, Revelation 21, 8, show them they're a liar. They deserve hell. Ask them if they believe hell exists. They say no, show them that hell exists. If they say yes, then you'll move on to the next point, which I'll talk about in the next video. So thank you, everybody, for watching.